Uh, as part of the anesthetic preparation for active FX, we find that it's not really necessary to give IV sedation. I know that um, we used to tend to give a lot of um, intravenous um, midazolam, but uh, if we use topical anesthetic in regional nerve blocks, the patient will get a very satisfactory level of pain control, and especially we tend to use much higher laser settings than um, conventional. What we normally tend to use is something, I'm not sure if you can get it in the United States, is 23% lidocaine and um, with tetracaine as well. And the tetracaine is 3.5%. And uh, we found that this is wonderful in terms of most patients, if you leave it on for an hour, will have absolutely no pain at all. So in terms of the topical anesthesia, we really only need to do the lateral aspect of the face because the regional nerve blocks will tend to cover most of the perioral area and also we can get the frontalis through the supraorbital nerve. So in terms of regional anesthesia, what we tend to use is xylocaine or lidocaine, 2% with adrenaline. Um, you can get this in Ireland. You cannot get it in Britain. And um, I think you can get it in the United States as well. So we can see this little frenulum that exists at the edge of the third tooth. What I do is pull the skin down over the needle and it doesn't tend to hurt the patient as much. And we know that the infraorbital nerve comes out through a little foramen just underneath the eye. And then I sort of hold the anesthetic for a moment and that allows it to infiltrate back into the foramen and we tend to get a better lateral spread of the anaesthetic. Okay. So on the bottom, it's the fifth tooth across. This little frenulum is where we're aiming for. You can leave the buccal cavity open to give it. And I find sometimes if you let it close against the needle, you tend to get a better distribution of the anesthesia over the nerve. Now the supraorbital nerve, which covers most of the frontalis first, except for the lateral aspect, can be got um, through the little uh, foramen, which just sits there. Um, sometimes it's easier if a staff member holds it up for you, but I should be able to get it here myself. And what we normally do is hold it just in with the needle maybe down about a third or a quarter way, pointing towards the medial aspect, and um, we can hold it there. Very, very effective um, frontalis um, block for probably a period of up to 40 minutes. The next stage involves removal of the anesthetic cream of the face of the patient. Um, as we know, carbon dioxide lasers tend to be attracted to the water within the skin. And because there's a high concentration of water within the saline and the gel of the lignocin um, that we're using, then um, the laser would obviously tend to sort of focus itself in terms of vaporization at a layer above the epidermis, which is what we don't want. We want to attract it to the water cells in the transitional zone and also within the epithelium itself. The next stage involves using tetracaine, not 0.5% that we just use as a topical anesthesia. The patient, as you know, probably can get a little sting from that mm. for the first five seconds. Um, I find that sometimes when you warn the patient, they tend to get a bigger sting than if you don't. The next stage just involves putting some visine, which is uh, a lubricant. Uh, normally the patient wouldn't feel this because they have got an anesthetic in their eye. Good. In terms of the corneal shields, these are the ones that I find are preferable. They're the ones that you can catch from the outside. And um, there are many different devices, as you know, some with suction, some with that. But I find that these are the easiest to use. Well done. Just going into seconds. 
Okay, in terms of the ultra pulse machine, um, we can develop short, sharp blasts either by pulsing or with a um, continuous wave with a computer pattern generator. And we have to give some respect to, I suppose, Reliant, who invented the technology um, behind fractionalized resurfacing, particularly in the fractal. We all know that this is probably considered a better wavelength. Because I sort of grew up on the older ESC sharp fan type CO2s, I still like to run this on power rather than rate, but certainly you can run it neither. Um, and in terms of power, I would tend to probably do everybody at around 18, but if I'm doing acne resurfacing, I certainly go 20, 25, and maybe even 30 watts. In terms of the energy, I normally run it from 100 to 125. Now, I tend to prefer a square pattern, as I presume most people do, which is pattern three. In terms of the size, we'll obviously push it to see as much as we can do. The machine will tell me when it's gone too far. And in terms of density, I know conventional books will all say to run most spaces on density two. And whenever we get to density five, we've almost lost the fractionalization effect because it's almost given total ablation. I still would tend to run most spaces on density four. And certainly whenever I'm doing necks or backs of hands, I'll drop to density two or maybe even one. In terms of the repeat delay, I tend to prefer not 0.5. And if we're going to options, we can turn on the full scan. And this is the computer pattern generator. And you can hear that the machine almost takes a different noise at that stage. And then the machine is now on standby. And this is when it will kick on. The plume from the vaporization will uh, run through this machine, which is great, right through the head itself. And probably the best thing to do is get everybody first protected by laser wear. Probably the easiest place to start will be in the area that I know that the regional nerve blocks are. Uh, that is size 6. Obviously, if we do it at size 8, we can see the type of effect we get. The active effects won't let me um, do it much bigger than that. If we run it on density three, we can see the difference there. So probably density three looks like a good setting. Certainly a laziness within us. I'm sad that it's the one that just gone off too soon on me I'm talking. Because we do know that if we, for instance, pull the machine back, we get less power. And it's nice to probably individually titrate the machine. But the maximum space where the machine's going to work is when this little metal thing is actually touching the skin. We also know that if we fire it at an angle, like this here, we get less power in certain areas than others. We know that if we pull the machine off, that will have less pain for the patient as effect, but if we can at all coordinate it through the screen, it's probably all as preferable because that is the way that the machine is made to work. And we can see it's a fairly painless experience. Now this patient has a lot of edge marks along the lip, so I probably would give her the benefit of the doubt by giving her an extra double pass in that area. We know that when we are double passing, you're 
risk of complications tends to go up either with pulse stacking or with repetitive pulses in the one area. And if we look at thermal relaxation time, the fractionalized resurfacing because of the random settings of the computer pattern generator will allow the skin enough time to settle down. And there's a couple of probably key places in the face that I would tend to run it extra. That'll be sort of along the jaws area. Now we're outside the nerve block area in, in this sort of area. When I'm doing around the eyes, um, often I tend to double pass just in the lateral aspect of the periorbital area. Because um, obviously this is where there's, there's been wrinkles. The superorbital block will probably cover some of the eyelid as well. And normally the patient doesn't tend to find much pain in this area. Close your eyes. Thank you. And I'm sort of going with the heavy here to try and achieve a little lift as well. Now open your eye. Thank you. Okay. Keep your eye open. Well done. If this patient had an intraorbital fat pad, but she doesn't really to any great extent. Um, I know we've seen earlier that she had a little one when I pursued her. I probably do a double pass underneath her eye. Now, normally when we do next, we drop the density to two or even one, and um, that should be good settings for the neck. Now, we have a lot of experience in doing necks. We have done certain many as 2,000 at this stage without any problems. We found that if this is the epidermis and this is the dermis, in the face, the two tend to mesh like this here. So that if we ablate one, there's quite a prominent number of dermal ridges that ha contain epidermis, and the epidermis has enough keratinocyte cells to regrow itself again without scarring. As we get into the neck, and this tends to get less, then we find the layers are almost on top of each other like this. So that if we ablate off the epithelium, then there probably isn't enough little pockets of epithelium left within the dermal ridges in order to um, reform itself properly. And obviously, the risk of having subsequent scarring, depigmentation, hypopigmentation, etc., um, post laser resurfacing would be much more. So, because of this, we tend to make up for the other way around. So, instead of shooting four or five down into a small area like this here, density four. We tend to just shoot two at density two, and whatever little bit of epidermis is there can correct itself. So normally with this technique, if you get prolonged erythema, then usually something's wrong, and you have to consider infection number one, or the possibility of linear scarring number two. Often it's very hard to make up your mind clinically because everything looks the same. So it's as well probably to certainly start off with, we tend to use Lamisil for the potential for infection. And um, if there's a possibility of uh, bacterial infection, then obviously orally we tend to give patients um, ciprofloxacillin. Sometimes we use fluofloxacillin, depending on whether we have any um, evidence of a staph aureus. And um, bacterial infections can scar. Certainly viral infections, particularly if the patients are on prophylactic for beforehand, usually disappear to the day, seven days later. <laughs>